Yes, yes. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the second event and the first lecture in the public event series of the fall quarter. Tonight, I have the immense pleasure of introducing Iñaki Avalos and Renata Sentievics. Avalos and Sentievics is an international architecture office based in Madrid with offices in Cambridge and Shanghai. The directors, Iñaki and Renata, are both educators as well. They have taught in prestigious universities across the globe, including the GSB, the Architectural Association, Columbia University, Cornell, Princeton, and Exam in Madrid, as they combine academic, professional, and research activities. Iñaki Avalos has served as chair of the Department of Architecture at Harvard GSB and as the 2009 RIDA International Fellow. He's currently a chair professor at Exam. The projects and build work of AS Plus are internationally recognized, have been the subject of 18 individual exhibitions and many collective exhibitions, including um, at the Arsenal Pavilion in Paris, several exhibitions in the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the Chicago Architecture Biennial, the Architecture Biennial in Venice, Bienale, and many others. The office has received over 80 awards and prizes in architecture competitions for built works, research, and other design activities. The professional work has been collected in 12 monographs, and their theoretical work has been compiled through 12 books. Critic William Curtis has chosen one work of the firm, the Pavilion in El Parque del Retiro, as one of the three best works built in Spain during the last 30 years. Um, in preparation for the talk, we asked Iñaki and Renata to share a title and an image for the talk. Uh, and the title they shared is Three Books, Three Buildings, and the image, image they shared is uh, what you see on the screen. Here we see the recently completed intermodal station in the city of Logroño, which I think opened like the day before yesterday. And I think today got an award, like it's literally breaking awards as we speak. And three book covers. Uh, the first one, Tower and Office, From Modernist Theory to Contemporary Practice, published in 2005, and then in collaboration with Iñaki's former partner, Juan Herreros, the Good Life, A Guided Visit to the Houses of Modernity, published in 2017, and Absolute Beginners, that came out um, in February of this year. Um, the image seems absolutely fitting to describe the project with capital P of Avalos and Sentiavix as the books, the buildings, the unbuilt projects, <coughs> the teaching and the leadership sometimes seem almost inseparable. One can look at them independently, of course, but the more pieces you put in the pot, the more one understands the individual parts and the role that they each play in producing the cumulative body of work. So I thought that just for today, we could introduce the lecture by its cover. And I did do a, a slight addition to the image that they shared because my own um, copy of The Good Life has a different cover. Uh, so I included that as well. Um, I won't attempt to describe the books. I imagine that's what they are going to do. But I just wanted to use the images in the cover to introduce the talk. Tower and Office has no image in the cover, just text and names. Iñaki and Juan shared a partnership from 1985 to 2008, which produced buildings and an intellectual project associated both with deep uh, Spanish architectural traditions, a new culture of architecture that was exported worldwide, and included ideas and a pedagogical project too, that spread and continues to be present in every institution across the globe. The Good Life came out in 2017. In one of the cover versions, we see an image from Buster Keaton's One Week. In this movie, a couple receives as a wedding gift a house, which is a kit of parts um, from the Portable House Company. This film was made in 1920, at a time of um, high popularity of these house kits sold primarily by Sears, which I don't know if you all know this because most people in the audience are very young, but this was a well-known American department store that does not exist anymore. And they sold shirts and houses. Um, very much like an IKEA product, the instructions read, to give this house a snappy appearance, put it up according to the numbers on the boxes. All sorts of things happen in the movie as the couple tries to assemble this ready-made house. And throughout this comedy of errors and supposedly things going wrong, the couple unsuspectedly transformed this product, product from a catalog building into a piece of architecture. 
for a brief moment at least, as captured in this image. Also in this version of the cover, we see the tourist mother house, and all I would say about this right now is postmodernism. In the other cover of The Good Life, we have an image from Jack Tati's feature film, My Uncle. Critics have said this film does not have a plot and that the movie was, and I quote, mostly a parody of consumerism and modern architecture, a satirical assault on the twin targets of efficiency and the modern world. The third book in the image is Absolute Billionaires. In this cover, we have Robert Smithson's photo of Central Park, which he took in 1972. This image has been described as, I quote, Smithson's effort to find visual evidence of the landscape that Olmsted was trying to create, this concrete dialectic between humans and nature. The following year, in 1973, Smithson wrote in his Art Forum essay, imagine yourself in Central Park, one million years ago. You would be standing on a vast ice sheet, a 4,000 mile glacial wall, as much as 2,000 feet thick, alone on the glacier, you would not sense its low, crushing, scraping, ripping movement as it advanced south, leaving great masses of rock debris in its wake. Under the frozen depths where the carousel now stands, you would not notice the effect on the bedrock as the glacier dragged itself along. Here, Smithson is highlighting the relationship between the deep history of the site, its physical qualities, and this new magnificent project by Olmsted as it reshapes public space and establishes establishes new relationships between the natural and the built environment. And this, I would argue, is what Iñaki and Renata do. They work exactly in the space where seemingly incompatible things come together, and they resolve how they come together. The history of climate and a wall. The foundations of thermodynamics and that view of the ocean. The polytechnic and the Bossar traditions. Technical knowledge and other kinds of knowledge like that include questions like composition, organization, etc. State-of-the-art technology and ancient craft and knowledge. Sometimes they call the project monsters. They say, they said this last Friday, don't try to make them beautiful. But if you see the projects, you know that they care about beauty. Humor, satire, accidents by Foster Keaton's, some degree of irony, maybe the postmodernism of Venturi, are somehow all involved in the process of unearthing knowledge that is hidden in plain sight, a new knowledge that emerges with each project. So at the end of this reflection, what came to mind, again, is the term dualisms, which Iñaki and Renata already offer, both as a pedagogical project and as a conceptual framework for their own work. They are great with words, and I couldn't find a better one, so I would say that what makes the dualism so productive, so sensual, so understatedly exuberant, so precise, in the construction of architectural culture, through buildings, through books, and through discourse, is that the place where the dualism gets resolved is not in the place of compromise, but in the place of invention. Please join me in welcoming Iñaki and Renata. Same time, uh, we. Uh, what happens? Yeah. 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 Ye
So we decided to just uh, to make a very simple structure. Uh, three books that have been important in, in our let's say, trajectory, and, and three buildings that we consider among the most interesting, some good, some ambitious, and relating them in a, as, as a process of research that continues being uh, uh, constantly uh, reworked. No? Uh, the first question uh, we were wanting to Put on the table was why some architects write books because this was exactly what I thought when I was uh, 17, 18, and I began to study architecture. No? A lot of books, a lot of wonderful ideas, but why architects write books? No? And these were in those days the, they say the leading uh, architects that were writing books: Dennis, um, Robert, and Aldo. Uh, everyone knows them, and everyone should have read these books. But to give you, uh, then I went to the modernist period, and the Corbusier wrote more books, and, and he did more uh, the buildings. You know, so, so it was a huge number of books. And, and Bruno Latour made wonderful, wonderful books, amazing books. And, but, but if you, I go to more contemporary architects, Moneo and Rem probably are uh, among those that have, have more influence in different sectors of architecture, and both of them have written very interesting uh, books. No? So, so there's something that uh, relates words and, 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 and bricks, so to speak. No? It's exactly the same in the 19th century. There were also uh, Marc Antoine Leger uh, was talking about uh, nature and architecture, uh, Duran uh, about the elements of composition, a great book, uh, Rondelet began to work with uh, construction techniques, new construction techniques of steel and stone. And the most interesting is probably the of the center, the four elements of architecture that began to relate architecture with principles of what we call now thermodynamics. You know? So the natural elements, how they uh, perform, and how they construct. So in the 19th century, we can begin with the Loger primitive art and, and finalize with the Part of, of center that was charged of, of air, fire, water, and all the elements that really are active in architecture in, 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 in formal and in performative ways. Uh, well, landscapers exactly the same. Robert Smithson, both the parks, the Corbusier, again, again, Austin. All of them wrote wonderful books. So I don't mean that these books are equivalent to these guys, but, but uh, somehow they, they have um, informed uh, my and Renata's trajectory as well as Juan Herrero's in the first time uh, with Tavern Office. And um, for us have been um, researchers that the important thing about the researchers is why you research on which topic and how do you research on it and how, how this has consequences in your work. No? And when uh, uh, um, uh, <laughs> The, the, this was a, a, a very, it was my thesis, this, this, this book. In reality, like I said, the drawings, uh, all the text is mine. And these uh, are different uh, tables that we prepare on elements of architecture that belong to the history of skyscraper structure, the flat, uh, the roof, the flat, uh, with a lot of technology embedded in it. Uh, the mixed use and construction, and we were trying to establish a kind of um, thematic, you know, so which are the substantial elements of the um, process of increasing the complexity of the skyscraper in, in the 20th century. Uh, well, I mean, it's, uh, different, different uh, topological structures, etc. Et uh, this uh, gave way to uh, Two uh, paradigms. I think that these two images represent basically all the 20th century. First is, is the wonderful uh, Bill Berg, the of Le Corbusier, uh, the skyscrapers in the middle of a jungle of trees, and with people walking around, and as a promise of another way of understanding the, the, the modern city. And well, this uh, leaf is under uh, amazing photography. 
of the central part that, that is a kind of materialization, a real materialization in the most important city of probably of the modern world. No? Uh, <clears throat> well, and we begin with uh, this. This is uh, uh, one of the first projects that we uh, worked in uh, together. Renata and I made it drawn and thought by Renata. Amazing, uh, I mean, uh, amazing project. No, uh, I was completely uh, uh, unable to understand where was her head in, in those days. But I, I, we knew that it was a kind of amazing uh, a new proposal uh, that could fit uh, our um, uh, professional life. And, and in this one, I leave you uh, with your side. <laughs> so interesting. Yeah, so I'm trying to come back to maybe to maybe to this image. Uh, the, how to start the project? Uh, the project starts with the uh, first idea of skyscraper. So uh, we want to work with skyscraper, square floor plan, typical glass prisma, uh, only the taking to the extreme, extreme of slater nest. They are towers which have 20, 10 by 10 meters, and they are thoughts for the hotel, so it's one room per floor. So this idea starts with this um, group of towers, and besides, uh, it was in the in defined, in defined site of a suburb of a big city. Here is Madrid, but it could be any other big city, which is a um, landscape with any, without any definition, cross through highways on different levels. So this means suburban life, which is organized and driven by the car. So when we go to common program, the decision is to hang it on the towers, completely independent from the ground floor, and the only access is through the, through the road, which is black to the highway. So on the ground level, we maintain um, natural landscape, it's untouched, just foundation of the towers, and their park, what is a common green space, it's in the middle, cutting the volume. And finally, we have another landscape on the roof. This is a landscape that Inat was explaining, the landscape of the Corbusier, the skyscrapers in the park, only that in this case, it's on the level of 100 meter over, over the ground. So I will go through different floor plans, just uh, showing, cutting the building. You have always the small scheme, so you can follow where is the place. This is a view from down, it's kind of valley. All the geometry of uh, uh, what we call potato, <laughs> uh, it's uh, driven through movement of the car. Mm -hmm. So we start with the MEP, which is a lower floor, uh, loading dock, a uh, park for staff, and in the border parts, always we have gas stations, stations for the car. Offices that surrounding exhibition space in the middle, and we come to the public park related with the commercial center, that it's going through different floors, going up, and finally, cinemas floating over public square, and the park, the park which is in the, in the middle, uh, created artificially, that connects all the programs to the down and to the up. The hills uh, are at the same time storage of the water, so the park has opening uh, with the cuts from up for the sun, but as well for the rain. And they are different, I will not go deeper, different way of living it, more sport, more urban, more park, more walking, etc. Upper floor, this is a floor for lobbies of hotel or different hotels. It could be one tower, three towers, whatever. We have 10 in total. Restaurant for the cars, driving restaurant, of course, couldn't be this. Sport facilities, pools, before we uh, sport facilities, and finally, 
the park on the roof with some courts, uh, with paths, with the access, our uh, park with skyscrapers. The towers, you can see how slender they, they are. Uh, we have upper part, the hotel rooms, different services for the hotel, and the lower part where it's, it's a storage of water, of amenities, uh, VIP parking for a car, etc. And the one, this is one floor, this is 10 by 10 meters, just one room, that is organized in three spaces, three corners. And uh, so you enjoy this panoramic view to all the direction. It's a sleeping room, living room, and the bathroom. It can be joined to floors to make duplex, duplex kind of floor, but basically this is a, this is a room. No? So, you could say at that moment that it's um, maybe inefficient. Uh, four part is just a core. Uh, but yes, you have these incredible views in different directions. You have these three corners open to the outside. And, but yes, now uh, we were visiting a couple of weeks ago New York, seeing these new constructions that grow some years ago, very slender towers with very little floor plan that now are growing around the Central Park. So again, this idea of park with the towers is possible and it's now becoming true in some places. And this is a park with the towers plugged to the highway. And again, the section just to bring our uh, conversation. Uh, at the same time, this prototype, how we could call it, it's thermodynamic machine. It's working with very compact volume, very massive, that can store the energy. And it's a mixture between these very massive elements and very light towers, which are exposed to the sun. So it's a system that you can calibrate to maintain working very well along over time in different periods of the year. At the same time, this concrete skeleton can exchange the heat between different programs which are organized in different moments of the day. Again, maybe it was surrealistic, it was 98. Uh, this building made at the same time, time for cars and people, but right now, when we think about electric car, it's perfectly possible. And even you need to plug your car so you could enjoy these other programs. No? So the time show that this may be kind of utopic at the moment, ideas that you develop slowly become much true that you thought about it. <coughs> well, um, so we, uh, probably Mariana remembers this, it was an exhibition of the GSD uh, of, of this project and, and it was, uh, the, the whole idea was to exhibit the books that we were reading and consulting in those days and the model, the model that was very nice and very colored and, and the tools. And so you can, you can distinguish some of them, are, uh, mostly all of them are uh, like uh, natural and artificial. Well, you have uh, insects, <laughs> you have this is hybrid, and we are in office, you have uh, Rainier Banham in Los Angeles, it's always present, Robert Smithson. So, mostly all the, let's say, the picturesque books, the, the blue and the gray. So, uh, in, in all these ideas come through uh, books and studies that were made at the same time uh, that the project, and, or even before. Uh, <clears throat> the second one, the second one was uh, a result of the first book. No? I, I made the, the director of my thesis was uh, Juan Navarro Van de Beek. I think that some of you will know him. He's a well-known architect, a very well-known architect in Spain. And, and he was my, let's say, contactor. And the day that uh, we finalized the, the book, and it, it was uh, part of my professorship in, in the School of Madrid, and we were celebrating, and he told me, Hey, Jackie, um, I, I like you, your work, but I have been thinking all this. It was one year and a half to write that. Uh, 
uh, this, is, this time the main people was, would be interested to make exactly the opposite. So to, to think about, not about the materiality of the, let's say, the components of the materiality of modern cities, but the air that is in between. Which kind of airs, which kind of atmospheres, why they are different, etc. And it was absolutely appealing for me. I mean, it was, I really like it because in, in these days, we, I was also interested in philosophy and, and I decided to, to construct a structure because for those of you that want to write a book, please believe me, the most important thing is to have a very clear structure. If you don't have that, you will be lost in a nightmare of ideas and papers and notes and quotes, quotes etc. But if you have one structure that is clear, that would be uh, it facilitates everything. And it, it's difficult to find a structure. I mean, in this case, it was very easy for me that those uh, the seven categories, uh, philosophical categories, more, let's say, active during the 20th century, uh, were represented by different houses that came to me that was a pleasure to imagine. You know, the, the house of Heidegger was his own house, but that is, is, is uh, you know, the positivism of of of, of us, uh, and Merleau-Ponty is uh, about the houses of Picard, etc., etc. You know? And uh, having that uh, structure was not easy. I mean, it took me a, a lot of time. Once I had the structure, uh, uh, it, it, everything came almost alone. And the moment that I discovered this is very simple structure, by the way, was visiting Los Angeles, and I brought this. These um, images of the green and green uh, architect, uh, a beautiful wood house. And I, I, I really am not super fond of these architects, they are fabulous, but I was not especially fond of. But I visited it, um, and there was a tour guide, and a guide, uh, a tour guide by a person that was amazingly interesting. Normally they are horrible, they don't know what they, what they talk about. Uh, this guy understood perfectly the mentality of the brothers, and I, I was in love with the house. And, and, and I, I went out of the house uh, uh, one hour or more than one hour with this person, and I said, I have it. I mean, I want to be the, the guide in the, the, the reader. You know, to, to understand why the, the, this space and this atmosphere is different than the other, etc. And this was the moment. So this is the kind of thing that I, I think is important for those of you, if any, that wants to dedicate himself or herself to, let's say, some resources, relationships among theory and practice, etc. Yeah, these were the Pertusta <coughs> House, Heidegger in his refuge, the Resistential House, the Accepting Machine for Living in the Positivist House, Picasso on Vacations, the Phenomenological House, Warhol at the Factory, from Freud, Freud of Marx, this continuous to the New York Love. House, parasites and nomads, the deconstruction of the house, Abigail's plus the house of pragmatism. And all of them, I mean, this is obvious, not uh, for those of you that have seen the, the film of uh, Tati, uh, it's very clear, uh, the difference among the phenomenological and the positivist, the existentialist of means, <coughs> the phenomenological of Picasso, what? The wonderful factory of Warhol, and the pragmatism. And the pragmatist house is obviously uh, uh, something that uh, is, belongs to this city, uh, and the, this image of Sulman is probably one of the most important contributions of Los Angeles to this history of architecture. I think it's uh, uh, an essential image, you know, because it, it's, it's, uh, the house is well known, the landscape of LA uh, exactly the same. Also, the fact that there are two women instead of two men is, is, is quite interesting, etc. Et et everything. You know? um, but for me, uh, and, and for me, there was a, a kind of uh, interest. It, it developed in us a strong interest in simplifying. In, in, you, know, you have seen the other project is about a uh, kind of baroqueism. Uh, you know, even if it is very strong in its schemes, it's very baroque. And we decided to be strict and let's say, let's do more with less, these kind of things, that one thinks sometimes. And we had the opportunity to very quickly uh, to make a kind of pragmatist house. 
with uh, uh, unfortunately the, the client got sick and, and we had to stop when he was going to eat. It's a, a house for someone that was very close to the world art sphere and the world art and and, uh, and she basically we gave her a kind of um, let's say like a musical party to you know, I mean just notes and, and like drinks you know, and, uh, rooms that could have whatever program. It was completely random. You could put them in different uh, organizations, just uh, furniture and, and rooms, furniture and rooms, and, and it worked. And, uh, and it was perfect because a lot of walls were built. It was perfect for having hanging uh, pieces of art, paintings, and photographs, etc. So this was the this was the project. In fact, it was the, the last one that we. Uh, and some went up, some went became patios. So the, the, uh, the volumetry is, is you create some light and some other things. This was like this, and this was the last state of, of, of the house. A pity, but um, we had at the same time um, competition that we won on, on a recycling plant in, in Madrid, in the neighborhood of Madrid, and this was it. It was exactly the same thing. It was uh, almost the same proportion and the same roof going up and down. It, it was uh, 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 possible to, to visit it. And, and the construction was the same technique. Uh, and then uh, we won another competition uh, in a modest, for a modest construction that had no program. Uh, uh, for, the, for a city very close to Madrid, and this was the, the model that we presented to the to the competition, and, and we won, and that I will explain it. Yes, um, maybe I'll go to to the site uh, just to give a short introduction. It's a small city. 100 kilometers out of Madrid, typical uh, industrial city that grow along of the highway and along of the train line. And in that moment, uh, it was 2007, so it was a crisis. Uh, a lot of people were without work, so the authorities of the city decided to give them kind of social place. So the competition was about leisure center. Uh, the program was really defined. So we are thinking, perfect, what, what's leisure center? So what is social club kind of can be? It's just a sequence of rooms no? that can uh, adapt to different programs. Uh, it, can, it can change in the time. So you, re you can recognize from the project before five vortex. In this case, they are bigger. They are five meters deep. And the four adapt to the plots, to the sides. And you have... Uh, even more simplified. Here, all the rooms have the same height. You have uh, courtyards that bring light into the uh, in, in, in light and ventilation. Uh, so different programs. Yeah, here you can see the materiality of that. Very simple industrial construction. And um, how we organize it? Some clues here. So very simple. More active programs like the gym, we put to the north. Uh, more static like cafe, we put to the south. So trying uh, to use the resources of the climate. So in the winter, you expose yourself to, to the sun, to the sun, while in, in summer you protect. So we add trees, we add canopies, textile canopies, the uh, water pool to refresh, typical elements, and the green roof that works very well in a Mediterranean climate, like that adds uh, insulation uh, to the building. And uh, as well as some uh, systems that we have nowadays, like geothermal or solar panels uh, in the extended of the roof. So here you see the section, very simple. It was just small to red with the offices, but all what it's uh, public program, it's just one floor high on the ground floor. Uh, we choose, we, uh, we could go up a bit more, so the height is more than four meters, 
tens of that, the heat is going always to the upper part. So we just give cross ventilation in summer. It's working very well with no any addition uh, systems. And the <coughs> and the roof, uh, which uh, Mediterranean is one of the place places in the world that the hot period is dry. So the garden helps a lot to protect from sun radiation in summer. Again, uh, all the sequence of the rooms, different lights, uh, different proportions, uh, different organization. We are like defined through the furniture, similar idea like in the house. Uh, and some uh, images. This is uh, these fo uh, photos when it was constructed, so the trees are really small still. The canopy, the water pool. The courtyards, which are another exterior rooms that can be used and they are used for activities as well. The interior uh, that uh, follow the same division like in the facade in the middle, uh, that help us to give complexity as well to play with the finishing differently. <laughs> you can see here, here how industrial is a, uh, a civil construction system, it's a metal structure with metal roof, there is no concrete, just on it there is uh, the garden, so very cheap and very simple. And the finishing uh, are uh, white painting, grey light painting, dark grey painting, and very thin line of wood. No? So everything was really low cost, but thanks of uh, these two highs, each room had different character and we could play with it. This is a library with light from up, the corridor to the left, the uh, auditorium, mobile room, I mean, whatever activity you can have. Follow exactly the same structures. You, the, the beams, the metal beams follow, they are just reinforced with the tube because the span is bigger in this case. The R room, the roof. Um, very also very cheap plantations uh, that it's at the same time fifth facades because the building is surrounded they are much more higher but at the same time it's a thermodynamic protection from from the sun the cafe and the facades south facades and this is 10 years after and we just visited some months ago, months ago. So the trees are much bigger, but it's working very well. People take care a lot about that. They are happy, they are using it, it's very popular. <laughs> you see that it's in perfect state. We are surprised how well it looks like. Library. And cafeteria is more decor decorative now than it was before. And yeah, auditorium, the trees in Kopilova in the courtyard grow up. And some new solar panels appear on the roof that maintain this disorganized now, but still green uh, roof. Well, these are. Well, uh, well. First of all, uh, this, this this was quite important. It's a small project. One of the small that we have built, but one of the one the, 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 one, the one that we have learned more about architecture in the and to simplify and to flexibilize at, at, at the maximum level the, the, the capacity to adapt to different uses. No? Well, some books. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, they were more technological, uh, and we had a kind of participation. Uh, and others that were more, let's say, um, uh, mm, I would say, uh, historical or phenomenological, if you want, that, that uh, correspond to the uh, to the second cycle. You know, the Abuena Vida, the good life, was was quite important, and it has been a great and still is a great success in. in it has seven different 
language it has been transcribed into so many different languages and is still a kind of important uh, reference for many studios and many universities. Um, and then I, I, I go to the last one. I mean, uh, <coughs> It's, it's very simple, simple the stuff that they have created, no? but it, it somehow it, it, it explains in how we move in time. So how, how do we um, evolve? I don't know if, if we evolve for many um, meaning uh, to, to increase the quality or the capacity for us. Uh, evolution is, is another thing. We can move in this direction or in another. Maybe we are wrong, we are right, but we don't want to stay in the same position all, for our life. And uh, absolute beginners uh, is uh, the result of a lot of time thinking on how to create uh, something that I had in my brain that was how to create a book of, of different pieces written in the last, let's say, six, seven years that were, I mean, very, the, Different in the, some were presentations in an exhibition on, on Bruno Town. Uh, the other was uh, kind of for a newspaper. The other was <coughs> part <coughs> of a collaboration with other architects, etc., etc. But, but I, I knew that they were linked by something, and I didn't know uh, uh, how to link them in order to create a, 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 a book that could be read. Um, the example was in this case could be read exactly like the, book, the books of some, uh, some some writers, as Raymond Carver, you know, the, I don't know, Three uh, Yellow Roses, is a book of tales, fantastic book of tales of Raymond Carver, and it's uh, um, uh, are seven, seven different stories that you feel constantly in the hands of the author. Is somehow you live in the, the same atmosphere. And this was exactly what I was trying to construct. No, and it's not easy. And I, I couldn't find, let's say, the, let's say the, the, the structure or an example of some idea that uh, could help me to, 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 to immediately organize the order, take this article out and put this order, etc. Et it was much more difficult than this. this uh, the good life, um, but I, I finally could, could find a way to put in, in contact. Uh, uh, somatic protest was written for a newspaper. Architecture for the search for knowledge was the Gropius lecture once I, I finalized me my, my relationship with the uh, uh, ESD as a chair. A conversation with Andres de Vandervira, Andres de Vandervira is, is an architect from the 16th century, Spanish. No one knows in this room, okay, I'm sure, but he is the most important architect of Spain and the one that had a super deep influence in everything that was built in Latin America. And also, he, he received a lot of influences from the north of Europe, from Italy, and from Morocco. So he was a kind of super synthetic architect, an amazing architect. Um, an encounter between transcendentalists and positivists was about. Um, well, uh, Robert and, and Armstrong. Robert Smithson is the uh, anthropologist. He called himself an anthropologist. Uh, uh, um, three religious skyscrapers is about three religious skyscrapers. And <laughs> dualism is about dualism. These are numbers. Uh, but all of these are techniques or references. For me, are always mm, ways to implement uh, uh, our capacity and to open our mind to, to things that we haven't thought carefully before. No? And, and the, the problem was to link them. And I think I, I, it sounds a little bit stupid. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, like uh, very timid to, to explain this, but uh, I have always been super fond of music. All, 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 mostly all of you probably are. But uh, I was from, I was six years or so. I, I lived in a house that had the best shop of music in, in the north of Spain, in Bilbao, and, and I was in absolute fans of, of, of uh, Beatles and Beach Boys. And, and I understood that there was a moment in music that was absolutely transcendental. There was a moment that the uh, uh, studios left uh, 
the, uh, the musicians to, to explore and recall ideas in the studio, so recording them. And then they began to make fragments and to reuse fragments and to create new sounds, etc. Et and Capital and AMI, uh, both in London and, and in, in Akiki here in the city, uh, made the same thing with the Beach Boys. And these are my singles of those days. <laughs> and the Beatles. No? And, and they produced uh, the good vibrations, the other songs and, and forms of music that were uh, never had been heard like that. No? And, and, and that were exploring a lot of things. And created a kind of synthesis from, uh, from fragments. Right? So somehow, and it, it had, I mean, I, I'm sorry to, to show this. I mean, I don't want to. These are very good books uh, written recently, more or less recently. The, the, obviously, it's a wonderful book for those that want to know how, how music works. Kill is fantastic, I like it. <laughs> and the past also, the reggae music in, in Jamaica is, is another very important uh, moment in the history of contemporary, let's say, pop music, so to say, so to speak. Well, and, and the, the genius that passed away recently. You know, the, uh, yeah, wonderful. Uh, he was not a good saxophonist. He was not a good clown. He was not a good singer. He was, uh, but he was amazingly clever and able to to put the, all the ingredients and explore new things and continuously uh, improve the music and uh, rising to incredible levels of complexity and, and beauty. No? So these were the uh, have been. I mean, that might sound. Stage this point, but well, anyway, uh, uh, this uh, uh, allowed me to put together an article on the cover in, in, in Paris, the Pit Somon, the park that uh, when Le Corbusier had no ideas, uh, as told me Bogensky, the one that worked for, for him a lot of years, he just went to this park and began to think about the projects alone. Um, this is the Rocky Sexo. This, this, this is me uh, talking with Andres de Valdelvida as if I were interviewing him in a Rocky interview. <laughs> the century is six centuries. The difference, anyway, it works. It, it really works, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> and, well, I'm still done, and I'm still done, the Corbusier, no, like, completely confronted, but at the same time, the, the very same thing, in my opinion. Well, Robert Smith and Bruno Latour, uh, and, uh, Bruno, Bruno, yeah. and well, all the things. And I, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to continue with this one. I'm, I'm going to present this last project. This is a project made in Logroño, right? the one that uh, Mariana was mentioning, that I received yesterday on a work, <laughs> and has received several of them. And that has taken us 14 years to finalize. It's a, a, a international competition uh, that we were confronting Rotterdam, MBDB, EMA, MBDB, Foreign Office. And all of them, you see, uh, fulfill the land with, with stuff, buildings more or less baroque, and, and that we were uh, uh, prudent and thought about the city of Logroño as it's a plan from the 19th century. It's, it's the only city in a big, well, big, relatively big, it's small, uh, uh, it's a capital of a region. Uh, the only one that has a uh, uh, super abundant, super running water because it's irrigated. Like, there are a lot of channels okay, that, that have to dissipate the water when, when there's a lot of rain, etc. Et and this means for us immediately in, in Spain, uh, green stuff. It means that uh, it's a place where you can think in parks and, and maintain parks easily and, and, and seeing how the trees grow, etc. Et so, uh, what, these are the poles that we presented to the competition an analysis of the green spaces and the, and the water in history. And this is one of the ports, and this is the other. Instead of having full of objects, we just need a park. Uh, and, and contemplated uh, mostly the buildings in five 
the powers to reds and say no, in like uh, 20 floors or something like that, the highest in the, in the city. But I mean, if you see this scheme, uh, probably it, it can, and also the, 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 the green uh, roof of the train station and the bus station, the bus station on the right, the train station on the left, uh, you will notice that it is a kind of modest but uh, deep influence of the potato that Renata has been explaining. You know? the, 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 an infrastructure uh, uh, dress of a park um, to rest the tide to look at around like uh, uh, seeing the nice. So, so the whole idea was this. Huh? It, it, this is now Logroño uh, and the train could become a kind of circle, a green circle around the city and transform the, let's say, the centrality, etc., et et as, as, as happened. This is the model we presented, the only one that was empty. And here you see more or less the, the difference. Of, and this was the sign, horrible, a kind of barrier among north and south, and the rich and poor, etc., et et that has disappeared. And this was the first place built. And, and this was the key of the whole uh, construction. It was uh, about uh, uh, trying to find a, a way to put the columns in the places that the infrastructure, uh, subterranean infrastructure, had left uh, for us always irregular. So we were like trying to identify which points. Less than 20 meters is the maximum span we have. So in order to make it cheap, and then the triangulation appears alone, almost alone, and the triangulation is shifted or moved to the surface and to the park as a new way of dealing with parterres or things like that. Um, uh, and then you see here, it's like we were also working with Teresa Gatti in, in those days uh, for the park. Um, uh, you see some, some skylights for the, the station. And this is the, let's say, the, the one that we wanted to make it really natural, so you can move and walk as, as if it were on, on a film land. And this is interior. The interior is uh, obviously triangular, and there was this place in, here you see it, in line, some recycled uh, aluminum uh, thin lines, and, uh, and uh, this, this, this roof, uh, divides the world of engineers up and architects down. And it was just a document that we drew in Rhino, very simple, and made everyone sign it, they got packed among them, and it was the best idea we had in 14 years. Everyone respected it. <laughs> so we were generous, they live in the space, and we didn't need that much space. Well, this is the kind of light entering, natural, and yeah, and this is how you go into the uh, station and uh, up in the parterres. And this is uh, somehow uh, what I was trying to explain. You see the structure is super chaotic. And, the, and this is uh, the difference among architecture and engineer. Very nice. That's right, that's it. That's right, that's, uh, these are a group of kids with a joint of marijuana. <laughs> and, and this is the, the second part. This was the train station that uh, took, took us the most important part. Uh, for the bus station, uh, we had this space in between, the bus station and the train, and we decided to create a kind of good uh, dome. Uh, Really important dome of 67 uh, meters spanning. And here in the image, you see the central uh, uh, void uh, of the dome and the construction and uh, beautiful image as well. And well, this is the other side, the bus station. You don't see any bus in here, but the, uh, below the, this, this uh, slope of, of the garden. Uh, we made this other part that uh, instead of going down, goes up, goes to the light, 
the rest of the sun, and so the, the whole uh, area, the vestibule, uh, is always uh, with a very interesting natural light. And uh, we emphasize the, the stair to create a kind of way to stay there, you know, in relationship with this artifact that is a kind of Martian in the middle of other land. You know. Uh, that we like it uh, very much. No? And these are the, the first days of the bus station a few days ago. The, the, well, the, the train station is, is very simple in the skin. And this is the, the stair, which is a U shaped uh, circle. No? <coughs> and these are the two images that we have brought of the dome, <coughs> which is. Uh, the way both stations are connected, also are connected by, by a car park in, the, in, in the, one of the sides of, of the intervention. And, and you see that the bus station to the left, the train station to the right. It's fantastic to, to stay where the photographer is and seeing how the people arriving to the station, when they go into this space, the, the first thing they do is to take the camera and make a photography. Systematically, 50% or more uh, of the people that will do that. And these are two images. Uh, uh, winter, yes, to very nice, like we like it. <laughs> and this is all. No? This is all. Thank you very much. <laughs>
if we have this work of, of you know, let's say, studying other things, uh, seeing other things, connecting this to that, etc. Et et and it's, it, it stays in a limbo. And when we have a project, uh, we, we try to uh, concentrate, uh, to try to solve it very quickly. Yeah, mainly because you, you, you always are in a run. I mean, in a competition, you have just states. In, uh, for a client, it's nervous, and you always have to give a solution. So somehow it's uh, a preparation to, to being able to give a quick response. And we give very quick responses, some good and some bad. I mean, then, you know, that, that this is, for me, the, the logic of our process. Basically, we work, at the same time, we work, some days we work together, some days it's one in a different, let's say, way. And we communicate and discuss. <laughs> I'm not so sure about what I'm saying. What do you think? Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's very, uh, uh, probably it would be kind of symmetric uh, with how we explain or how we make this presentation. Uh, Inaki is focusing on the, the techniques, and uh, I would define the narrative. I think that uh, it's important to have a good uh, explanation to the project. That the project, uh, the sentence or, or the words, affect uh, possibility to make architecture, and, and are, are very helpful. So when you start the project, sometimes you go in one direction, in another one, and uh, the the words can place it and push it uh, to more precise, specific, or powerful, I would say, concept. Any other questions? Uh, thank, thanks for the great lecture. Um, if, if one encounters 99.9% .9 of um, work of all Spanish architects, it's impossible to escape uh, cementitious, the concrete, the stone. Um, in, in your work, it's uh, almost willfully, it's absent. Um, but you're, in, in some way, there's, there's more Northern Europe, Los Angeles, the steel kind of uh, assembly that's not familiar, that uh, one encounters in, um, in the genre of, let's say, Spanish architect that lives uh, globally. Um, I'm curious. Uh, that, that seems like a very beautiful departure uh, from one's origin in some way. I'm curious where the next destination is. Um, a beautiful departure of where you've gotten at this point. Um, if I could kind of read into perhaps uh, the text uh, as a way forward, uh, it seems like the narrative and the fictional. Um, I really enjoyed the conversation with the 17th century architect. Um, as a, as, a, as a way to imagine uh, a departure from where we are uh, towards perhaps destinations that, that are not yet known in the context of the project. But uh, just left me with wondering, like, uh, how, how do you break the current, um, maybe, origin that you find yourself in? Well, the space architecture is not only made of concrete, uh, obviously, <laughs> but I understand quite well your question. And, well, I mean, we uh, have a kind of, from the very beginning, even when we were associated with Juan Herreros, no? uh, we understood uh, that uh, we had to, to go with uh, two things, uh, faster materials, uh, and mostly, uh, in all cases, cheaper. And if we want to have a chance to win competitions or have competitions, right? and that we like uh, this material more than, well, let's say, the solid, the terminal, or whatever. And uh, we began very quickly to, uh, very quickly, uh, much more soon than any other architect, at least in Spain, to talk about sustainability, to talk about uh, the cycle of life, to talk about uh, deconstruction uh, and reuse, uh, 
all these issues that have become now normal, but in those days for us were like the main motives of our, so the, the translation of our um, the taste for this lightness into something more serious than just I like. Okay. And, and it, it became the kind of, of door to increase our, let's say, concentration in, in technical issues as thermodynamics, et cetera, et cetera. So, so we have this, I don't know if now we stay as serious as we were, but we studied a lot about that. And, we, and this affected us to create a kind of circle of experts around us that have helped us a lot. And that we maintain them as, as real friends, as uh, Matthias Schuller or Salman Craig, that I think is coming here, and you will be benefit all of you will be benefit of all one of the professor. I mean, not Martin, Salman, <laughs> everyone. You know her, and you know him quite well. Things that people like that, that, that for us have been um, more important than our older artists, and, and that we have learned from them uh, a lot. And we continue uh, in contact with many of them. And, I think that's, that's an important issue, but it began like that. I mean, it began a very simple. Let's go cheaper and faster. <laughs> Thank you for another beautiful lecture, as always. Yeah, I can get I wanted to ask a specific question about Casa Mori, which is one of my all time favorite house plans. Um, and, I, and I never realized that it evolved through the factory and then the community center um, in, that, in that particular way. So, I, so I'm curious about, in terms of fragments of ideas, let's say this, in this case, it's a planometric scheme, that diagram that gets carried out, but certainly the character and its performativity, its instrumentalization completely changes in each project. Let's say the Casa Mora was very, the way I read it, is extremely, uh, it's like a serverless exquisite course, right? Where the tension, the charge of nature of each program just collides into one another as a house without corridors. It's all about the threshold. And then the factory kind of gets evacuated because everything gets lifted up off the ground, right? It becomes more of an open plan. And the community center kind of reasserts itself, but then there's this overlay of, let's say, all of the passive environmental elements that then distributes a new kind of gradient across that. Um, so I don't know what the question is, I'm just kind of curious if you guys could speak to that a little bit. Maybe what, what gets preserved in the project with the capital P from moment to moment and what gets abandoned and reconfigured in each, each case of, of those situations. Um, I can start. I can start. Um, I, first of all, it's, it's important to say that we like the project of Casamora as you like a lot. And once you do not construct it, it stays in your head somehow. <laughs> Maybe not exactly the same, but it's like you, you want to do it. No? So uh, you are looking for all kinds of opportunities. Sometimes you take the fragments of this project, like in, in Pinto, in the in industrial building. No? So it's just memory, it's just, just a roof. Uh, and sometimes you can bring almost full idea it's in, in the case of Azteca or Leisure Center. But once you bring it, it starts with another life. You know? So you add things, you change scale, you start to make it more complex. Or add the layers that uh, maybe you did not have occasion in the project before because it was stopped. The, in this case, the project has longer life, so you have possibility to make it more, more complex. But, but the, sto the story is the same. I don't know yeah. if you want to add. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm interested uh, in, in uh, kind of establishing a diversity and a similarity. I mean, uh, we are not rejecting the, the notion of the style. No? We are not looking for it. It, 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 it happens. Normally, and, and, and but at the same time, we want to escape to the, let's say, the monotony of the, these guys that stay. Everything is white. Everything is square. And everything is uh, rhomboid. No, whatever. I, uh, I think it's stupid to, 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 to deal with the 
question. Maybe they get wonderful work. You know, but I, but I, I, I think that we need to, to some, somehow navigate, explore, uh, update, increase, uh, put in crisis things and see how much there is this other geology or whatever. And this is more experimental. So our idea is so we don't think that uh, you as an architect can uh, think your trajectory in terms of uh, increasing the knowledge. I think obviously the technical part of you increases the knowledge. But this is not important. I mean, I think it's more about um, constructing a satisfactory totality, which is other thing. No? It's more, I mean, you know, there are in paintings very easy. There are painters that are staying constantly with the same this is black, the other is brown, the other is green, but it's a square and the same size and whatever. And there are others that are aiming to explore you know, the territories and linking, yes, very forgotten that, that they are linked with, with the, this other thing and, and construct something that is for us, I mean, at least for me, it's, it's amazingly more, more interesting because it's like, like enjoying uh, exploration. That's it. I mean, it's very simple. About and uh, it's it's not the it's not the accident that um, the book is called Absolute Beginners because it's a it's a sentence but it's for the book but it's like we feel as well doing projects in each moment. <laughs> It's great to see this project completed. You know, ten years ago you showed phase one, <laughs> yeah. and <clears throat> I can imagine the opportunities you know you had when you were able to revisit you know so much of this. But I actually wanted to ask a question about books. Um, <clears throat> it's a hundred year anniversary of Towards in Architecture, the book that reiterated slogan after slogan, right? And we think about the book as being a broadcasting, an advertisement of, you know, ideas. We think about publishing books, you know, for, for that reason and audiences. But it feels like you can't design your projects without doing books. In other words, you can't make the next I don't mean that. I mean that that's the instrumental nature of the book. Is that true for you? Because I feel like it's less broadcasting and more like the medium to do the research, which finds an audience, but otherwise you can't end up with this. Is that, is that true? I think this being a I am the responsible of writing. <laughs> These books, you know? so um, I, I have, I mean, absolute beginners. She was mentioned in the title, uh, but the, in the second page there is a quotation of a, a, a theater author of Spain, very young guy, like 28 years, but it's fantastic national award. And he said, uh, "The past is an animal always alive." Uh, it's a beautiful quotation. You know? So. Uh, the title is absolute beginners, but the second thing you read is the past is an animal always alive. And I, I, I like the contrast because it's, well, it's not like a contrast. It's something that can look like a contrast, but it's, yeah, and it's exactly what uh, I feel that we are, I mean, the response uh, almost literally to the kind of research, is if we can use this word, you know, the kind of research that we are dealing with. But, at the same time that we feel more or less actually beginners, it's difficult when you are so many years, especially me, <laughs> working as architect, you believe that you are super young and new, so you have a trajectory, that's clear. But the other thing is, more, uh, for me, it's very important. No? So how things come back, but in a different way. No? So, 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 so how they, what you have made 10 years, 15 years, 20 years ago, uh, can be reshaped and, and can, uh, can acquire uh, other meanings, and you can reuse in a completely different context. And, and, and uh, someone go somehow go one step forward, you know, and, and 
the same time you are trying to navigate something new, and at the same time you are linked to, to your past. And, and this is a nice thing. I, mean, I think it's what, created, what makes the, this discipline a nice. as well. It, it was a great talk and I'm going to uh, extend uh, Neil's question a little bit deeper on the on the generative power of writing. Right? So it, it struck me and I know these three books really well and it struck me when you describe them editorially that one depends on the other and the other depends on the other. Right? That, that, that kind of sampling of absolute beginners would not make sense if you hadn't and when you describe the search for order through writing, right? If you don't have a predetermined order, even if it is a sampling, which is, you know, non-determined order. So I wonder if you could speak a little bit about that, a little bit about the importance of writing as a search for order, for ideas, for the relationship between ideas, to, to go beyond what we learned from the past, but how, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, is that is that the strength of writing? Should we all write? Uh, you know, does that does that make sense? I think that I have to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that it's uh, it depends very much on your on, on, on your priority. I mean, I, when I was a kid, uh, a young kid, uh, I was doubting. A writer or an architect from the very first, uh, as you say, I have a, a brother 10 years uh, bigger than me that is uh, an architect and became a painter. And, and uh, I was also in painting and <coughs> had some facility for both things and, and drawing and writing. And, and, and it was my, my father that uh, convinced me in, in, with constant gifts of books written by engineers and very scientific people that were determined. In Spain, we have like two or three of the best writers uh, come from the area of science. And so he told me, I mean, look, I mean, this guy began with this and ended with that. I mean, so why don't you do the same? I think, okay, I will do it. I will test. And I arrived to the school of architecture in Madrid. And in one month, I was so happy to be drawn. I was so, I mean, I thought it was paradise. I mean, I, I, I discovered that it, it was super uh, beautiful, uh, producing draw, beautiful drawings, technical drawings, etc. So, so, and, but, but I maintain both. Um, and they beat each other. You know? so it's, 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 I mean, I think that if I have to uh, summarize this, is is you have to be confident in what you like. When you are young and when you are a kid and when you are old. And it's, it's just, there is no, it's not a rational thing. I just think you, 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 you are completely inactive about your study of philosophy. Mm -hmm. Then you study some, some years and why? I don't want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> if you want in some moment, you need this part. No? Yeah. So Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Thanks for the great talk. Ooh, this is loud. Uh, um, I just had a maybe a quick question about uh, how you think about the diagram, like Casamora as Max was. Um, describing as something where the diagram moved for different projects and had like elasticity to it. Thinking about the skin of the potato moving onto the topography of the landscape in the last project you showed. Yeah. But then underneath, and when we look underneath the landscape, there's this super rigorous, again, elastic diagram where the triangulated pieces. Um, could you maybe say a few words on the relationship between looseness 
sphere projects in this like hyper rigorous orthogonal geometry that you're working on? Geometry is very helpful some, sometimes. <laughs> in, in the last project uh, that Inaki was explaining, uh, it was one uh, plan when uh, he explained that uh, the columns of the structure we could not locate in any order. So <clears throat> brought to the system disorder. But this disorder brings the triangle form. So for us, this triangle was perfect solution to bring the same geometry to all the elements because it's a very complex uh, project. You know? So we have a triangle great. So there's a grotto, which is structure of, of, of the station, of the interior of the station with this triangle ceiling. When we go to the park, again, we can use this triangle as a impact effect of for the garden. And so there is a kind of uh, complexity of elements, but they play in the same team somehow through the geometry. No? Because you, you have different materials, uh, different dimensions, a, a lot of different things. But still, uh, are going in the same in the same direction. You will recognize it like one uh, common thing. So in this case, geometry was very useful for us. And uh, yeah, we are very careful uh, about uh, geometry. And uh, when you were saying uh, looseness at the beginning, uh, I don't think we had looseness in in the projects. I mean, the first project. It's uh, the, the form, it's coming precisely from the scheme of the how uh, the air makes a movement when one uh, airplane fly. I don't have, I don't, don't show this scheme, but it's this like kind of uh, the scheme about the flows of air. Remember what is the first scheme, but the rest was made by the road. So somehow, you start to make this movement, so the geometry is going with the curve of the car. You know? So we never go to complete looseness, let's say. You know? It can be made up a first sketch or, or, or something that you start to think about it, can be more disorganized, let's say. You could say, like the image you have. But once you get to the project, we are trying always to be precise with the geometries for what we use them, which would go with this project. So we are quite pragmatic, pragmatic in these terms. Can I, can I add something? We have completely different, we, we have completely different approaches. She's <laughs> obsessive with geometry. <laughs> so she likes the problems. So in the moment that uh, uh, we have a kind of complex problem, I just say, wow. Okay. <laughs> All the parts that I know that this is true. She, she, she really likes this complexity and is, is amazingly good in the geometry and the solutions that are uh, absolutely impossible to understand in 3D and seeing this and we see how, etc. Et so it's a machine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, this, this is what, uh, so, so we always have these kind of things. Uh, but we always put a problem in, in, in uh, everything in order to satisfy his, her expectations. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and the other, I mean, the other part is that the, the, the need of simplification comes from from being a teacher for many many years. Uh, when you make a syllabus or whatever, you have to to be very clear. You have to be very, very clear of what you want, and you have to simplify. Uh, the terms, uh, so everyone can understand exactly why is the target. No? And, and this is a kind of exercise that, uh, for example, the, the Casa Mora, this the most rectangular, comes from, from an exercise for the students. Uh, that, uh, that was basically a text of two or three lines saying, uh, 
the same uh, conventional house that doesn't have any relationship with the 19th century typologies or the 20th century typologies. That's it. But not the corridor house with rooms, not the, the, the two heights and super big glasses, etc. Uh, and, and, and it came from that. So, uh, so it was very simple but very problematic to find a rule that, that could fit with this and could become a house with interest. And then when we when we were the weather students in this case, you know, we <laughs> discovered this scheme and we said, well, we have it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Yes. No. Um, thank you so much for the beautiful talk. I was thinking that you shared that the studio you're currently teaching is called Second Chances or yeah. Second something like opportunities. Second Opportunities. And we're taking old projects and imagining them again or using that diagram as it moves to another project. So I was thinking that between the second opportunities and the absolute beginners, hopefully we don't have to wait another 10 years, but uh, we can see, you know, the new use and the new projects that come along. So thanks so much.